Hi guys, so in this monologue, James O'Brien explains clearly the confusion of Boris Johnson's message. So let's hear what he had to say. What did you make of that? Because I'm less clear now than I was before he started speaking, and I really, really, really wish I didn't have to say that. I mean, when he started speaking, we were in the midst of a conversation that involved setting up the Prime Minister's message against the Chief Scientific Advisor's guidance, weren't we? That that was the point of the phone. And if you're just joining us this morning, we looked at what Patrick Vallon said yesterday. We looked at what Boris Johnson was expected to say today. And we detected a distinct contradiction between the two positions. And I think Boris Johnson just made it worse. I, I, you know those dice that you use in Dungeons and Dragons that have like 24 sides? And I mean, we thought we were confused by a six-sided dice. And Johnson then pulls out a 24-sided one. Because who, who, who decides whether you go back to work now? Who decides whether you're safe? Your boss, if it's safe. That was the best bit of the question. That's Joseph Heller himself would have been proud of that. That was pure Yossarian, wasn't it? How, how, how do you know if it's safe? Well, it is safe if it is safe. How close was he to actually saying that? So how can the employers make these decisions? How will people know whether or not it is safe at their place of work? And the Prime Minister came vanishingly close to saying, well, it is safe if it is safe. Brexit means Brexit. Leave means leave. These words need actual definitions. You can't just say, it is safe if it is safe. And if I have to wear a mask on the tube that I'm not sub-tube, I've got to stop me so London-centric. If I've got to wear the mask on the public transport that I'm not supposed to use unless it's essential, but I could work from home even though my employer has told me that I have to come into work, therefore the journey has become essential and I put on the mask when I get on the train. I have to take the mask when I get back to the office and the office is COVID secure. Who says my employer says? What are their qualifications? They don't have any. How do I know if it is safe? You know it is safe if it is safe. Is everybody clear now? Are you still with me at the back? And then the question, I, I almost lost the will to live after Jane Merrick of the I asked the question about, was it Jane Merrick, I think, who said some, some people are going back to work in January? They've been told not to return to the office until January. What's the message to them? Well, the message to them is that they must wear a mask except when they're not wearing a mask and travel by public transport except when it's not essential, in which case they must also not travel by public transport while also travelling by public transport and wearing a mask. Oh, and it's safe if it's safe. Okay. What about the scientists? Oh, don't worry about the scientists. We're politicians. We've got to make the tough decisions. What are the tough decisions? Well, heads and tails. Just toss the coin. Right. And the death toll? 45,000 plus. Some profound concern that the daily infection rate may be turning. And that line about British common sense assumed for me a sinister ring there because... I'm a little bit boring like that. I, I, I have the daily cases in front of me. Um, and as he talked about our great success of, the, of British common sense. Now, let's pretend that this has been a great success and not one of the most catastrophic responses to the coronavirus on the entire planet. Let's just pretend that it has been a great success for a minute, leaving aside the moment, for the moment, the urgent question of how the hell we've ended up in a country where the Prime Minister who's presided over one of the worst death tolls on the planet can stand in front of you and tell you that there's been a great success. These are the moments, aren't they, where you feel it slipping through your fingers. That, that semblance of, of reality, objectivity, truth that we've clearly taken for granted for years. See it in America. On, on a scale that is still almost impossible to compute, but we've got our own little versions going on here. Matt Hancock claiming he locked down on the 16th of March when, when we were there. We were literally there and he didn't. Boris Johnson describing a great success with a death toll now in excess of, of 45,000. It's 45,119, I think. That's a great success. Do you know, there's only been, well, I say only, the global total at the moment is 590,000. We're not a large country, right, population-wise. I suppose we punch above our weight. But 590,000 confirmed deaths worldwide, 45,119 of them are ours. Our mothers and fathers, our grandparents, our brothers and sisters, our children. And that man stands in front of you and says that it's been a great success. What would... A disaster looked like. 
45,119 deaths is a great success. What would a catastrophe look like? And he brings that phrase, British common sense, into proceedings because, of course, that cuts both ways, doesn't it? He lies to us about it being a great success. And he credits us with having achieved it. So what does that do? That lays the groundwork for it all being our fault. So when reality begins properly to bite and the ludicrous, despicable conduct of a prime minister claiming a triumph in the face of 45,000 deaths, when that gloss falls off, he's already laid the groundwork for it to be our fault. You see that? It's not a triumph. You know that. I know that. He knows that. They all know that. But it is our responsibility because he just said so. A credit to the great British people. So when he is no longer able to claim a triumph and has to describe a tragedy, a catastrophe, his own hands steeped in the blood of British men and women, he's going to try and blame it on you. This is about creating confusion. Confusing the public into thinking that the government knows what they're doing so that when the public make mistakes, the government can hold up their hands and say, we didn't do this, it's the public's fault. Now, this is also being extended to councils, the NHS and care homes. We've seen clearly how Boris Johnson blamed care homes for not following the rules, rules that he did not actually present to, to care homes and care homes had to make it up as they went along. Care homes, of course, didn't have sufficient PPE during the pandemic, and we've seen a huge number of deaths taking place in care homes, and, of course, many deaths not actually being counted at the beginning. We haven't fully understood the reasoning behind the fact that many elderly patients who were ill and infected with COVID were transferred into care homes, and, of course, these care homes, in many cases, were not prepared. Some care homes actually refused to take patients from the NHS because they were worried about their staff and the people they were looking after. Masks is another area that has just caused a huge amount of confusion. So Boris Johnson had told people that they would have to wear masks. Michael Gove said it wasn't necessary to wear masks. Then Boris Johnson came out again later and said, yes, it is necessary to wear masks. Then Matt Hancock was saying it's necessary to wear masks in a shop, but not in a restaurant. But then there are many places that act as both restaurants and shops. One example being pret a where people can enter, buy food in a shop-style environment. So in that case, people would not be obliged to wear a mask. Or would they? I was completely blown away by Boris Johnson's comments about employers. So he basically said that employers will be allowed to decide if people should come to work or not. Now, imagine a scenario where you work for an unscrupulous boss. This person doesn't believe in COVID, doesn't believe in mask wearing, doesn't believe in social distancing. These people do exist and we know some of us have met these people. Now, imagine this person is your employer. This person is your boss and they decide that you need to come to work. Now, you, you cannot refuse because there is a risk you will lose your job. Now, some people may say, well, I will take a principled approach and I will say I'm not going to work in a place like that. But because of the economic disaster that's connected to this pandemic, more and more people will be without work. So more and more people will be afraid to piss off their, their boss or their manager and risk losing their job. So they're not going to uh, avoid work. They're going to go in. They will have to make a choice. Do I take a risk uh, with my health or do I take a risk with my job? And many people are forced to go back into work because they can't take that risk. I think there's also another aspect of this that many people who are working from home are doing it because they are privileged they're working at a certain level within the company that permits them to stay at home. They're allowed to work from home. They have the materials needed to do that. Now, many people, mainly the working class, don't have that privilege. They have to go in. 
If they don't, they won't be able to earn a living wage. They will not be able to feed their families. And I think this is an important contrast that we must always remember. Finally, Boris Johnson talked about COVID secure. Now, who is going to confirm that a workplace is COVID secure? If he's allowing employers to decide, then of course, how will employers decide whether their businesses are COVID secure? Now, I think larger companies and corporations are probably going to follow these rules or going to create strict rules. But I'm afraid for people who work for smaller companies or people who work on the lower rungs of the ladder, they won't have these types of benefits or protections in place. Once again, certain employers may not take this situation seriously enough and of course their employees will be affected. Boris Johnson is playing games with people's lives and their livelihoods. Once again, this is an attempt to offload responsibility that government should have onto councils, onto members of the public, onto employers. People are being sent back to work because the economy and businesses need them to work. This has never been about the individual, has never been about protecting people. This has been about protecting industry, protecting the people who donate to the Conservative Party. They want the machine of industry working again, irrespective of the damage it's going to do to individual workers. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. Why not become a Patreon and enjoy access to our Discord server where we share news, chat and have some fun. If you become a Patreon, you can also make video suggestions on topics that are important to you. Check it out via the link in the description.